I'm often asked how the whispering came about. They called him the Wonder Bairn of Scotland. Without a commentary box, one had to sit in the audience. You've got paying guests either side of you. Uh, the great Joe Davis was playing, and I'd only ever called him sir up to that moment, and I couldn't say that on the air, but he was only a couple of feet. So I talked very quietly. It's very, very sad for me because it was probably down to Ted Lowe I turned professional. In 1976, they asked me to go on Pop Black. At the time, you know, I was the youngest pro in the world at 21 at the time, and um, I said, well, I don't think I'm ready. He said, but I want you to go on there, you know, you're young, we need to, like, you know, kickstart it with the young people playing and things, and uh, I turned pro, you know, purely to play on Pop Black, so it's a really sad day for me. Oh, I say. Part of our lives. Every snooker player would have, at some stage, been touched by his words, and he was our John Arlott of the snooker world and um, pleasure to have been in his company and um, a sad day obviously. Just the last red now. I think every sport needs a voice, you know, cricket had its John Arlott, uh, Wimbledon had its Dan Maskell, uh, we had Ted Lowe and he just gave it that sort of presence and uh, I always remember when I was first asked to commentate and uh, after a couple of days, the producer, Nick Hunter at the time for the BBC, said, how are you enjoying it? I said, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. He said, uh, well, you're doing really well, but just to let you know, we've already got one Ted Lowe. <laughs> and I was doing it, not like me, I was trying to do it like Ted Lowe because that was the standard he set. And uh, it's just a sad day for the game. And what a time for it to happen when one of the most exciting finals we can remember for years, he's going he's to miss it. I remember when I started playing snooker way back in, you know, back in the, the late 50s, early 60s, back in Cologne, we had a, a little black and white television in the club I used to play in. And on grandstand, you'd have the great Joe Davis playing and Fred Davis playing. And there was this fabulous voice. And it was whispering Ted Lowe all those years ago. And as a little boy, I never, ever thought that I'd ever meet these people. And then I finished up commentating you know, with Ted Lowe who, for me, had the best voice I think we've ever heard on television. Well, that can't possibly be. I don't believe that. Whispering Ted Lowe, you know, he was synonymous with snooker. And, uh, yeah, I think if he gave us anything, one word, class. No. <laughs> Ted was uh, the perfect BBC commentator because he didn't try to analyse too much. He was the colour man and what every sport needs are the people to fill in the gaps and paint the picture and Ted was great at that. A fabulous picture of a very happy and popular man. I think Ted Lowe's legacy would be um, whispering Ted Lowe. Everybody as soon as you say whispering Ted Lowe they know who it is because Ted was the voice of snooker and always will be the voice of snooker. They called me Whispering Ted and it's stuck ever since. So I suppose it's right to say, I'll now whisper my goodbyes and thank you so much for having me. <laughs>